from Upper Michigan Source, this is your Sports on Demand for Thursday, January 2nd. I'm Mike Ludlum. Great Lakes Intercollegiate Athletic Conference basketball returned last night and everybody in the UP was at home. Let's go to the Barry Event Center where the Wildcats hosted the Ashland Eagles. And we'll start with the men's contest. First score of the game came when Sam Taylor would drive and kick it over to Marcus Matelski. And he's been known to hit a shot from that area. And he had 17 points on the night for the Eagles. Dylan Bogard would knock down the three from the far side. And Ashland was keeping pace. In fact, they were leading 10-8. Alex Fruin to Sam Taylor. His wing shot is good. He led NMU with 18. And making 14 three-pointers made it easier for NMU to win 74-61. Second game, the women's contest, and you might remember that Ashland lost to NMU in the first round of the NCAA Midwest Regional last March. Well, guess what? The Eagles did not forget Renee Stimpert driving and scoring off the window, and Carly Piru would hit an open three. Nothing but net there. Wildcats are struggling with their shooting early. Jessica Schultz floats one in. And she's going to put another one in from the paint. But NMU shot about 28%. And Ashland kept right on going, winning this one easily, 80 to 39. Up at Michigan Tech on the scoreboard, the women defeated Wayne State 69-55. Hannah Hobson had 19. Ellie Welsh 15 points for the Huskies. On the men's side, an 80-68 victory over the Warriors. Kyle Monroe, another double-double, 35 points, 10 rebounds, not to mention four assists. North Central's Dawson Bilski had 15 points and six rebounds. For the Huskies, now Lake Superior State chipped in with a couple of victories. The women 63-57 over Davenport. Claire Radke had 17 points for the Lakers. On the men's side, Kimontrese Collins had 19 points and 8 rebounds. And LSSU had a 3-point win, 62-57. Finlandia men's team, a rough night down at Northland. Lumberjacks took it 101 to 66. Superior Central's Joe Hainanen had 13 points and 11 rebounds for the Lions. Houghton's George Buttvillas had 10 points for the Lumberjacks. In Big Ten basketball, Michigan State finally pulled away in the second half to defeat Illinois, 76 to 56. We turn to girls basketball, Calumet visiting Nigani. Second quarter action, Brianne Jodo, Alyssa Hill, up and in as they break the press. She had 18 points, 12 eight minors. For Calumet off the miss, Lizzie Torla, Ellen Sturos ahead to Mary Beth Hallinan for the easy bucket. Copper Kings pull within 12 to 10. Miners would break the press again, then Lily Nelson fires a pass to Chloe Norman for her second straight layup. She had 10 points. Sophomore Alexis Strom hits a runner there for the Copper Kings. But it would not be enough. Nagani pulled away in the second half to take this one 50 to 35. To Delta County, where Ishpeming met Gladstone. And at halftime, Gladstone Youth Basketball celebrated 10 girls who put up at least 10,000 shots during the month of December. That's practice. Third quarter action, no for Maddie Algren. Yes for Megan Crow at the buzzer. And it was 28-20 Braves after three. Taylor Zizi knocks down a triple for Gladstone early in the fourth quarter for a 31-20 lead. Hematites get some help from Emma Poirier, who goes around Megan Crow, and scores here. She had 19 to lead everybody. But Crow had a double-double for the Braves, 17 points and 10 rebounds, and Gladstone grinds out the victory, 42-35. One other girls game, a little bit strange. Leona Wabino defeated Stevenson 52-45. Eagles had one free throw. Leona Wabino had 31. Hmm, game played in Wisconsin maybe? Shh, 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 shh. Okay, never mind. To the boys scoreboard. The M&M game, Menominee over Marinette 67-48, Keegan Monroe 27 for the Maroons, West Iron County 62, Kingsford 57. Couple games from the Copper Country, Houghton 61, Calumet 57, and Chassel 76, Hancock 57. I did not plan that. We did not get a report from the Angadine Manistique game. Cedarville defeated St. Ignace 75-247. 
There were three Hockey Players of the Month for December, all from Michigan Tech in this case, three out of the four. Defenseman of the Month, Eric Goats, uh, shared the NCAA lead in scoring for defensemen with a goal and six assists. He had the game-winning goal for Tech in the 4-2 victory over Michigan State in the semifinals of the Great Lakes Invitational. Goaltender of the month, well sure, Matt Jerusik. He beat the Spartans 4-2 and Michigan 4-2 to win the GLI. And the rookie of the month, Logan Pietala, uh, the freshman from Howell, had a natural hat trick in the Huskies 4-2 win in that championship game over the Wolverines. Now the Huskies are on the road this weekend, Saturday and Sunday at Arizona State, while NMU takes on Bowling Green in Ohio Friday and Saturday. It's been a busy day at Michigan Tech as the U.S. Cross Country Skiing Championships are underway and the first order of agenda freestyle sprints 1.5 kilometers and we'll start with the men in the final six qualify for the final and Gus Schumacher of the Alaska Winter Stars and Thomas O'Hara of Alaska Pacific are in front early and Schumacher will continue with the lead here with Benjamin Saxon of Stratton Mountain, Vermont School, right behind him. And Schumacher will go on to win. And Northern Michigan University's Kettle Banneru finished fourth in 315.17. Now let's look at the women. That's the one right there. And it did not take long for one of the skiers to get going, and her name would be Haley Swerbel of Alaska Pacific. Elena Sonneson of Stratton Mountain School would be right behind her. Coming out of the turn, it is still Swerbel with Caitlin Patterson of the U.S. doing pretty well. And in the final stretch, Sir Swerbel is out in front and she would win by less than half a second. Sonneson took second. Let's hear from your national champion. I think the key today was to go out hard and kind of keep the pushing the pace from the beginning for me. It's a tough and turny course uh, that Houghton has here, so it's, it's tough to know when to pass, and the easiest way is to stay in front. Action resumes tomorrow with middle distance freestyle skiing. The men will go 15 kilometers and the women will ski 10 kilometers. 